Right, this is lecture two of the pipe sizing exercise series of lectures. And this one shows how to pipe up a simple one appliance installation. I'm going to show you the way that I do it, which is very similar to the way that it's shown on page I7 of the Viper book. Right, to carry on with the way that I do it. The first thing I do is I draw a box with four columns and three rows. And then the top, I put the amount of gas needed in box A, length of pipework and fittings in box B, how many appliances are on the installation in box C, and then for box D, we're simply going to multiply the number B by C. Very simple. This is all you need to do pipe sizing. So if you remember from the last lecture, we need four basic things to pipe size. The first thing we're going to look at here is the kilowatt of the appliance converted to meters cubed per hour. So this is the system that we're going to work out the pipe sizing for. And this particular boiler is 11 kilowatts in net. We know from the previous lecture that to work out meters cubed per hour when all you've got is the kilowatt rating we simply multiply the kilowatts by 0 0.094. In this case 11 times 0 0.094 is 1 meter cubed per hour. That's the amount of gas that that boiler needs to run correctly. We've got to make sure the pipes running to it are big enough to carry that amount of gas through the length of the pipes. So now we've got our first box filled in. The amount of gas needed in meters cubed per hour, as we've just worked out there, is one. You simply put one in the box. The next thing we're going to work we're going to need to work out is the length of the pipes which are needed. On this system we've got straight length, a 90 degree elbow, a straight length, a 90 degree elbow and then a shorter length. The lengths of the pipes are 1 meter, 1 meter and 0.5 of a meter. And you simply add these together. That gives you two and a half meters of pipe. Now we move on to the third part of our basic knowledge, which is how many times does the gas turn or split? Well, in this case, It turns twice, once at the first 90 degree elbow and once at the second. And we know that each turn is worth 0.5 of a meter of pressure drop. So we've got two at 0.5 of a meter. So we know that we've got to add one meter to the overall length in order to ensure the correct 
pressure drop. So once we've added those two together, the two and a half meters of pipe, plus the one meter accounting for the elbows, we end up with three and a half meters of pipe. Now the next thing is very simple. How many appliances are there on the installation? And in our case, there's only one appliance. So from these figures, we can now fill in box D, which is simply B times C, 3.5 times one, which gives us 3.5. Our row is now complete and with all these numbers you can easily calculate the correct pipe size. Now these are filled in we don't really need to worry about the two middle boxes. We're only now interested in the two end boxes because they're the ones that I'm going to use when I look at the discharge tables to work out my pipe sizing. To save any confusion, I write them in the second line. So I now know that the amount of gas needed is one meter cube per hour. And I know that I need it to go through a pipe length of three and a half meters. These are the only two measurements I need to work out the chart to tell me the correct pipe size. So here we go. This is the chart in the Viper book. It's in section I and it's on page I5. So we've got copper pipe and we've got three and a half meters of copper pipe. So the first thing we do is look across the top to calculate our length. Now, three and a half meters sits in between three and six on this chart. So what we simply do is three is too small. We simply go up to the next number and calculate it from there. So we're going to be calculating this from 6. Once we've worked the top row out, we look down the column until we come to a number that's either equivalent or the first number that's larger than our discharge rate that we require. And in this case, the A box on our grid was one. And the number that's in the A box is the number you're looking for down that column. Once we've done that, we simply look to the left to the size of pipe column and it shows you that the pipe size you require is 12 millimeters. If we work that backwards just for explanation a 12 millimeter pipe will carry one meter cubed per hour of gas which is what we wanted and it will still deliver it even though it goes through six meters of pipe. Our measurement was three and a half so we just take the next largest one which is six and we know that that will definitely supply the correct amount of gas 